Okay. Um, the conventions on the rights of the child, which we'll learn about when we get to human rights, sets out the rights for all children and young people under 18 and informs our young offender law. Okay. We have international obligations to croc to protect our children. I would always mention that in a young offenders essay in the introduction that we have international obligations to the conventions of the rights of the child and therefore must protect young offenders or have a duty to protect young offenders um, article one of uh, croc states that anyone under 18 is a child so we've adopted that New South Wales law defines a child as a person who is under 16. A New South, in New South Wales, a young person a sorry, oh my gosh, I think it's because of all the lectures I'm doing. Um, in New South Wales, a young person is aged 16 to 18. They are different to adults because, and this is important, in an introduction to a young offender essay, I would be stating this. I would say that we have international obligations to croc, and must protect children, blah, 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 as I just said, and say the reason why, or the reasons for this, for these, for this protection is that children are not able to make wise judgments, are less experienced or inexperienced, are immature and more vulnerable to crime, vulnerable to being influenced, vulnerable to being hurt, all that kind of stuff, okay? I would provide some brief don't go too much into it maybe a sentence actually i would say a sentence is enough of just justifying why we need to treat young offenders differently is that a body paragraph you could talk about probably not but as a marker if i read that i'm giving you ticks already i'm, I'm really liking that it's engaging me it's pushing your mark up already okay so we know based on research that young people become involved in crime because they have history of neglect, low levels of educational attainment, histories of sub substance abuse, and poor parental discipline or supervision. There are two different types of approaches to young offenders, and you could look at both of these in one body paragraph or two separate body paragraphs. We have the welfare model, which seeks to rehabilitate them. Again, as I said, look at those social factors that make someone or make a young offender want to commit crime. So everything we said here, childhood abuse, low education, no, unemployed, all that sort of stuff. Then we have the juvenile model, which as I said, is what we think of when we think of election time and we have a new possible new prime minister and we have new, um, or we have new state representatives and we think of someone standing there on the news or wherever saying i'm going to be tough on crime young offenders need to be imprisoned they need to suffer whatever that's what we think of okay i could quite easily make a body paragraph on each and talk about how i think the first one's more effective or ineffective and vice versa all right children criminal proceedings act 1987 new south wales Hopefully we will remember that the common law presumption is Dolly Incapax, that a child in New South Wales under 10 is considered to be Dolly Incapax, meaning that they cannot, they do not have the consciousness to commit a crime. Okay. They don't have the mens rea, that word, that phrase that we like to use. They don't have the mens rea to actually commit a crime. Um, that's, you can't deny that. Okay. However, between the years of 12 and 13, sorry, 10 and 13, the presumption applies, but it can be challenged, okay? Um, it's presumed you are incapable of forming the relevant intent to commit a crime. So it still applies, but here it can be challenged. So you saw in the beginning, it was a conclusive presumption. Here, it's a legal presumption, meaning conclusive, meaning can't challenge it. Legal presumption, meaning you can. The prosecution must rebute the presumption of Dolly Incapax as an element of the prosecution case. Okay. This was highlighted in R LMW 1999. Hopefully we all remember this case. It's a really big case from the age of 14 to 17. The presumption of Dolly Incapax doesn't apply anymore. Okay. At age 18, you become fully responsible and you're an adult now. However, people believe that we need law reform because 
we need to raise the age of what we consider a um, dolly income tax to stop applying. Um, for example, Amnesty International has campaigned raise the age, hashtag raise the age, following the Don Dale Royal Commission of the mistreatment of young offenders as young as 10 in detention centres. Okay, and the idea is if we raise, raise it from, let's say, 10 to 14, we won't have 10, 11, 12, 13 year olds in detention centres anymore. So they can't get mistreated. All right, the rights of children when questioned or arrested. The law that details the rights of those when questioned or arrested is the Law Enforcement Powers and Responsibilities Act 2002, New South Wales, aka LEPRA, our famous LEPRA. Okay. When conducting an arrest, there must be the use of reasonable force. Okay. So you can't just, a police officer can't use extreme force against a child unnecessarily. It can, however, the police officer can, however, if the child is swinging and trying to hit the police officer, maybe like bear hug them and try to restrict them. They can't, you know, start hitting back or anything like that. Um, when conducting an arrest, there must be, yes, use of reasonable force, as I said. Police officer must also caution the young offender specifically on the right to silence. You must provide your name in situations of driving a car, under 18 drinking alcohol in a public space, sorry, not pace, suspected witness of a serious crime on public transport involved in a car accident. Yeah, um, this is a really good one because all the time you see like people driving or people on the train and saying, oh, I don't need to give you my name. You do need to give them your name. Um, yeah, under the law. Time limit of six hours questioning for a young offender, not including rest periods. We know though that they often make really long rest periods to try and tire you out and exhaust you and frustrate you into confessing, okay? Um, yeah, so the police can hold you for six hours but give you a break every hour for three hours and therefore you're exhausted by the end and you can just confess even if you didn't actually commit the crime. Okay, you don't have to go to the police station unless you're arrested. You have the right to an independent adult, okay? Can't be a police officer, independent adult. Who can be a, per, a parent, a guardian, or a support person um, during the questioning time? And if you're over 14 years old, you can decide who the adult is. A confession can't be admitted into evidence without that support um, person with you. Legal aid will be provided without charge and merit means tests. Again, this comes back to what I was saying before. Because how vulnerable they are, they, they automatically get legal aid, okay? Because they're so young. You can't strip search under 10 years old. Children under 14 cannot be photographed or fingerprinted unless authorized by the children's court. No DNA samples if you're under 18 unless authorized by the children's court. R versus LMW 1999. Listen up because this applies to so many different areas of young offender law. Um, and so you could use this for so much. So if we don't know, hopefully do, but just in case we don't, we had a 10 year old um, through, sorry, I must've been really tired when writing this cause I'm not sure what I meant by, by through a six year old. 10 year old through a six year old who he knew couldn't swim into George's river where he drowned. Okay. Originally the case against him was dismissed, but there was enormous outrage in the media and the idea of a killer kid. Okay. Who should quote unquote suffer for what he's done. All right. The New South Wales DPP took the case of the Supreme court charging LMW with manslaughter. All right. The jury heard that LMW was immature for his age, more like an eight year old and found him not guilty in less than three hours. As evidence of that, something that LMW would do is he spoke about with like family members um, waking um, Corey Davis, who he threw, his cousin who he threw, um, waking him back up, like almost like magic. And so we, we started to realize that he didn't actually understand the full intent of what he had done. He didn't actually understand he drowned him. Um, and he was, he was obviously very immature. So because of that, we found him not guilty. Okay. And the, K, the case study is represented in the Sydney Morning Herald article, Boy Cleared of Killing. Um, this is a seminal case. This is a really big case. I would definitely maybe just take a screenshot of this or jot it down or whatever, because yeah, this, this one's really important. 
Okay. Children's Court Act 1987. It's a specialized court established in 1987. Um, it deals with, and that's the legislation it exists under, of course. It deals with juveniles aged 10 to 17, but also under 21 if the offense was committed before you turned 18. You must have legal representation. It's a closed court. Media is allowed, but they have to hide your identity. There's no jury, there's a specialist magistrate, and it's less adversarial as the young person is able to participate more and ask questions. This one I'm gonna breeze through because I wanna get back to um, the beefy stuff again. Um, it has jurisdiction over any offense committed by a child, except if it's a serious indictable offense that will go to the high court. Um, it has criminal, sorry, committal proceedings of any indictable offense where the accused is a child for serious indictable offenses are held in yeah, higher courts, such as the Matthew Millat and Corey Davis case. Uh, then the Supreme court as it was murder and manslaughter can also be in the district court as we saw in our verse DS 2014, um, traffic offenses are only heard before the children's court. If the child was not old enough to hold a license, otherwise you appear in local court. All right, youth Corey court. This is another thing you could write a body paragraph on. So I would pay attention. Okay, so this is a children's court designed for indigenous peoples, okay? It is less adversarial, it is more um, informal, and it's more tailored towards, well, it is tailored towards the rehabilitation of the young indigenous offender, okay? Um, it involves the family and the Aboriginal community. It involves more informal meetings. Um, you must plead guilty if you're going to um, uh, become, not become a part, but attend, sorry, that's the word I was looking for, attend the Youth Koori Court. Um, sorry, the Koori Youth Court. If you're accepted into the program, the offender will attend a meeting known as the Youth Koori Court Conference, okay? Um, Overwhelmingly, it has high rates of success, lower recidivism, higher satisfaction levels with victims, um, and better better outcomes for society because obviously there's reduced recidivism. I really want to emphasize that because this is definitely something you could talk about for young offenders, okay? Um, young offenders hasn't been directly asked in the HSC for years and years and years and years. So I'm not saying that it's definitely going to be asked, but it's looking good. So I would jot this down, okay? Um, the Koori Youth Court, and specifically the Youth Koori Court Conference, um, definitely something I would talk about if I were you, and it's how successful it's been. Um, the harshest penalty you can receive is a control order, which is similar to imprisonment for an adult, except that the young offender is held in custody in a juvenile detention center, can only be sentenced to a maximum of two years detention, okay? Or three if you have many offenses that you're being sentenced for. If you think that's a good thing, articulate that in your response. If you want to disagree and say that's a bad thing, articulate that. Um, the magistrate must give reasons why other punishments weren't used. So that comes back to the purposes of punishment and the justification. However, control orders have no specific deterrent effect because there is a high rate of recidivism. Um, no, I don't know why I wrote that. As I said, a low rate of recidivism. It's very successful. Um, in R versus GDP, the judge stressed rehabilitation. However, there are exceptions to this general rule where a young offender can be said to have adult behavior. Yes. But if I were you and I was talking about how effective it's been, this is a great case to use and to talk about the aims of the court. The judge stressed rehabilitation, not retribution. All right, Young Offenders Act 1997, New South Wales. Um, this is basically the different um, punishments you can receive, the different uh, penalties, sorry, you can receive as a young offender. Okay, it, they exist under this piece of legislation. Um, so warning, cautions, youth justice conferences. There are divisionary programs, okay, which are, which exists under the same piece of legislation and it's where you don't go to court and you don't have a conviction, but you go to a program that's tailored to rehabilitation. Um, it applies to summary offenses and to some indictable offenses, but not to serious offenses such as robbery or sexual assault. Under the Act, young offenders proceed through a three-tiered system of divisionary processes, okay? Divisionary programs are very, very successful as well, 
they um, promote high, low rates of recidivism. All right, we're going to breeze through this because hopefully we all remember this really well. We have warnings, cautions, youth justice conference. This is what I'm talking about with the low rates of recidivism for young offenders who attend this. Really effective. Um, it's it, recommended by police or by the court, okay? The aim of it is to keep young offenders out of the court. However, it's a bit ironic because the court can recommend young offenders to go here. So it's almost like, well, you're trying to keep them out of the court, but they have to go to the court first to get there. So there's a bit of conflict in the aim um, there. Um, they are for offences that are more serious or where there are no more cautions available. Like a caution, the young person must first admit to the offence, just like how we had in the Youth Curry Court. A juvenile justice convener, a representative from the police and the victim may attend. I'm um, sorry, I don't know why convena was so hard for me to pronounce. Um, it allows victims to say how they are affected by the crime. Yes, because the victim can stand up and tell the young offender how they were personally affected by the crime. Okay. Now, it's good because it's more uh, time efficient. It's much quicker than court. It's cost effective. It's not as effective as a children's, sorry, it's not as expensive as a children's court. It promotes high rates of victim satisfaction. There's 80% of victims said that they would recommend youth justice conferencing to other victims. There's high public support. 87% and these statistics are from Boxer. 87% um, of people agreed that the victim should have the chance to talk to the offender about how the crime affected them, focuses on restorative justice and rehabilitation, which is good for the um, young offender, right? We want to rehabilitate them. So it seems as though it's good for the victim, society, the offender, seems really effective. However, the, ineffective, well, the ineffectiveness lies in its usage or administration. It's really good, but it's just simply underused. It's not used enough. Police do not give this to young offenders as an option. Okay. Um, so more police discretion is needed pointing young offenders towards the YGC, YGC. We need more children there. Okay. Because we see that it's effective. This again, definitely something you could write a body paragraph on. Certainly. Um, however, not everyone agrees. Dr. Don Weatherburn from Boxar states that the YGC's, YGC, I'm sorry, YJC, I don't know how many times I've said that, YJC is what I meant, doesn't address the underlying causes of juvenile offending. Okay, that's one perspective. You can agree, you can disagree. There was an alternative youth and drug alcohol court which provided counseling and rehab programs, but it was too expensive and it was axed in 2012. Nonetheless, I would definitely write about the YJC if I were in your position or I would have it prepared. 